Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the WBBL Review. Uh, our special guest this week is Essex Rebel star Claire Paxton, so welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. How how are you? How, how have you been over the, obviously, double-headed this last weekend, so a bit tired? Yeah, a bit tired. Spent the day recovering. Well, no, actually, I went to work, but recovering at work. Long weekend, but we came out with a win, so not not all bad. So... In this episode, we're going to talk about your basketball journey, uh, what you've accomplished and what you've experienced through your time in basketball. Uh, We're going to talk about you in more detail as well, get to know you a little bit kind of outside of the court and get your opinion on a few things like the WBBL Trophy Weekend last week and the WBBL in general. Um, So let's let's get started. Let's go straight away for where were you born? Where are you from? Okay, Uh, I was born in Edinburgh in Scotland, born and raised, yeah. Okay, so when did basketball become a thing in your life? Um, I started playing probably in primary school, like just in school, 10-ish. And I, I don't think I played for a team until I was like 13 or so. Yeah. Um, and I played in the Scottish National League until from being like 14, 13, 14 until... I went away to America when I was 18 or 19, something like that. So long ago, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about um, not playing in teams until you were 13. Was that any reason? Was that not the opportunities or was it just not not what you thought of doing at that, that stage? Um, There was probably opportunities. My older sister played. Um, I just did so many things. Like I played a lot of different sports when I was younger. I played hockey mostly. Okay. And then did a few other things uh I don't know and then I got quite tall and wanted to play an indoor sport and all those things <laughs> and then I played basketball and that was my favorite I guess and it seemed to have stuck with it <laughs> it's even colder in, in yeah. Scotland than the northeast isn't it so indoor yeah. sports are the way forward didn't want to be playing hockey outside and in, in the middle of December so so let's talk about that move across to America um was that something that you'd planned for a while? Did did the opportunity just spring up? Talk us through the process of getting there. Yeah, so I originally, I went to Edinburgh University for one year before I went. So I'd planned to stay here. I was like, nah, I don't want to move away. And then uh, I played GB under 20s, oh gosh, 2012, 2013, a while ago. I don't remember. And so after that, the coach was like, oh, if you want to get better, you need to go somewhere else to play. Yeah. Because at the time, basketball wasn't as good as it is now in Scotland or, I don't know, maybe in the whole UK. I didn't know much about English basketball at the time. Mm-hmm. So he was like, you need to go out and play somewhere else. And then an opportunity just kind of sprung up. And so I just went. It was all quite last minute. It was july august time you know most people are already there and i was just kind of finalizing everything so i don't actually get there until uh, i think it was like the end of september beginning of october my first year and then i just yeah enjoyed it so stuck it out for four years talk us through some of the experiences you had then in america where whereabouts did you go i was at colorado christian university it was in denver colorado so it's a division two school um I, it was I chose it kind of on the basis that I knew that I would go and play straight away like I didn't really want to go halfway across the world and not play so I went with that and played a lot for all four years so it was good and we were quite competitive we won games we won my my sophomore year we won the our conference and played in the national tournament and stuff so that was probably the highlight of the play my playing time there was that stretch we were really good um saying that my junior year we really com- competitive and did well in the league so it was fun how did you find outside of basketball moving halfway across the world yeah it was fun i'm i'm was pretty easy going i i didn't mind being away from home that much i made really good friends and met really good people um obviously there's days where you're like oh I wish I was at home but 
-hmm. usually you're so like wrapped up in the basketball like it's constant every day you kind of almost don't have time to realize that (laughs) that you're not at home so um it's like a good distraction from everything else and then you've got all your classes and stuff on top of it so and like the studying was really different to what I was here because as I said I was in at Edinburgh University for one year and then went there the way their universities are like it's just so different it's constant rather than here it's kind of the last week you have to do everything all your assignments are due in one week whereas there they constantly having little like tests and stuff all the way through so you actually have to kind of stay on top of things what was it that you were studying I did um physical science it it was a bit random honestly I do a a mixture of all science kind of in one which then four years like come and go what what were your plans when you were coming to the end of your time I didn't honestly I didn't really have any I knew that I wanted to go um and go back to Edinburgh when I came back um and just be at home for a bit Mm -hmm. and then I got the opportunity to play with the Scotland national team so they were um going to what's the word trying to qualify for the 2018 Commonwealth Games and Gold Coast so we there was a big campaign plans we went to malaysia and thailand and played some games to try and qualify for commonwealth games um and then through that i met bart and then from there i got the opportunity to go and play at caledonia for the season um so all kind of just fell in place i didn't really do much (laughs) it just kind of happens because because of um because of bart really like bart reached out to me and was like what are your plans and I said yeah I'll be in Edinburgh he was like cool come and play yeah. who, who you yeah. know not what you know yeah exactly that's all it is uh, so your kind of WBL career has taken you to four different teams now um talk us through the progression of of how you got to Essex and starting at Caledonia what what happened in that time to get you traveling the country yeah, I just wanted to see see everywhere. And no, I'm just kidding. Um, I just <laughs> after after the year in Caledonia, I think before I guess maybe because I was Scottish, I don't know. Like I didn't, people probably didn't know who I was. Um, and then after I had a pretty decent year in at Caledonia, and then uh, it was Krumesh reached out to me from Leicester. Mm-hmm. I said, "You want to come down here?" I said, "Sure, why not? Let's try something different." It was quite. At the time, Caledonia, we were pretty competitive that year, but, but then, you know, Leicester was like a kind of a powerhouse. I was like, I'll go experience that and be on a a team that's like got the reputation kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, for being competing at a really high level, just a, a new challenge kind of. Um, so I went down to Leicester for a year and then nothing really happened. I just... I, like I really enjoyed my time at Leicester. It was really fun. Uh, Jesper was a really amazing coach. Um, then at the end of that season, I uh, considered either staying there and then got the offer from Lee to go to Durham. And I thought, yeah, it makes sense for me. I kind of liked, it was a bit closer to home. It was easy to get back to Edinburgh from there. And so went up there for <laughs> a year, um, stuck around the second season just with COVID and stuff it yeah. just seemed like the right thing to do um, and then from there I got to Essex uh, mostly study like I wanted to study and so it was just a good fit again mm-hmm. spoke to Tom liked what he had to say and came and had a visit down here and it all just fell in place as well and I had a really really enjoyed last season we had a really good team good group around us, amazing facilities and everything. And so I felt comfortable and wanted to stay a little bit longer. Yeah, so I, I put a post on earlier today um, about kind of fans' questions and anyone that want to ask you questions. I normally put them right at the end, but I'm just going to yeah. kind of every now and again pop one in because there's certain things we're talking about. Um, you mentioned Durham and you year with Durham. Um, mm. Nicolette had a question. And I think it's yeah. slightly loaded in the fact that she says, who was your favourite teammate at Durham? <laughs> My favourite teammate at Durham. Um, 
oh, I don't know, it'd be hard to pick. I like them all. That was a really fun team to be on. But uh, I have to say Nicolette, don't I? I think you have to, yeah. I think, <laughs> I, I, think... I have to. No, she, she was great. I, I really, that was one of a really fun team to be on. Um, I think because we're a bit, bit older that year, we're all about the same age. We kind of, Lee had a good amount of trust in us. Mm-hmm. So we kind of didn't self run, of course. He did a lot, but we he, we had a lot of say in what we did. So it was it was a fun atmosphere to play. So you mentioned the facilities and the experience at uh, Essex. Uh, kind of leads us in nicely to a week and a bit ago now, uh, the WBBL Trophy weekend, where every team in the WBBL plus the four D one teams all descended on Essex. Um, what were your thoughts on that whole weekend? I mean, I I really enjoyed it. It it kind of go went hand in hand with what I do. So I also work at Essex Sport in the sport as sports development. So I do like schools and community stuff. So it was a good opportunity for me to get some of the kids that I work with and some of the schools I work with to come in and see what it is we do. Um, it was I thought it was a really great weekend. It was. A great crowd um and it was fun to have everyone there like i saw a lot of people that i know and it's good to catch up with everyone and just kind of show show off what we do here like the whole experience is more than just the basketball the you know the lights and the smoke and stand on the microphone it's just cool for everyone to see and like d1 teams to get the opportunity to come and play in that kind of situation was really cool as well yeah, I was thinking that you you probably one of the most uh, tired people from that weekend because uh, I said I saw you setting up chairs for different uh, drill competitions and you were just constantly on the go on the, on the Saturday and then you were there a lot on the Sunday as well as well as obviously playing your match. How how were you on the Monday morning? Yeah, it was all right on Monday. Honestly, my biggest worry was that like about half past one on. Saturday I looked at my watch and I was like oh I've already done like 8,000 steps I don't know if I'm going to be able to play (laughs) (laughs) because I was there like all morning Mm -hmm. uh, doing some like uh, kids sessions and stuff and then with the schools and all that and I was like oh gosh I didn't quite realize how how busy I was going to be but it worked out all right. (laughs) Uh, Do you think that format is is kind of one for the WBBL to keep moving forward every year central venue kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I definitely enjoyed it, but I know I'm probably a little bit biased because I didn't have to go anywhere. Um, I think it is definitely a good showcase for what we can do, like putting on an event like that really spotlights women's basketball. And like if if, if, if it was all spread out, we wouldn't have got the same publicity that we did. Like we had ITV, BBC all in looking at it, whereas if they were spread out in separate places, I don't think it would have got the same same coverage from from things like that um and again for people like you and uh like chris and stuff able to come in and see the whole weekend and put it on social media and everything i think it helps with that and kind of spreading the word of british women's basketball in -hmm. britain and that it is legit and like there's a reason to come out and support your team and go and find a team that's local to you and support them yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a bit of a, a bit of a journey for myself. But from a selfish point of view, yeah. I absolutely love being able to see the eight games across the two days and see every team and every player. I, I thought it was a, as you say, a brilliant weekend. We stand on the mic and the the dance cams and everything that Essex uh, kind of brings to the the showmanship of of basketball uh, was was really good. Yeah, and I think. For the teams that didn't have to travel as far, or maybe teams that didn't have to um, put on their own game day on the day, it was good. But then other teams, you see both sides of it, don't you? Some yeah. teams maybe lost out on the opportunity to sell tickets and stuff, but I guess they can host it next year and they get to sell the tickets. It doesn't yeah. have to, it's not always going to be in the same place, is it? So, And it always helps when Essex get the win. Yeah, I think I think that that sweetened the weekend a lot, and again, I think the extra publicity we had probably helped helped us there. Like the crowd was really good. We saw a lot of families and new faces. I think in the crowds, it really helped us in our game. And I think the support was constant throughout the whole weekend. Though there was 
a decent number, especially the Saturday, especially I was there all day. Yeah. And people didn't seem to care who was playing. They were going to get involved and cheer for someone anyway, which was nice to see. So Essex got the win in the trophy, but how, how would you kind of sum up Essex season so far? I think we are kind of building, like we continually building. We had a bit of trouble at the start with like imports coming in late and uh, just kind of getting used to playing with each other, getting everyone healthy and ready, ready to go kind of. But we've seen constant improvement as the season's gone on. Even the end of the year last year, I know we lost to the, like your Sheffields and uh, Leicester, Seven Oaks, but I think we've shown that we are able to compete. We're just continually building and building and hopefully we can just get over the final hurdle, which we did last two weekends ago against mm-hmm. Seven Oaks. So I think, I think we're, we're going in the right direction. We all really enjoy playing with each other and I think we're starting to learn better how to play with each other and we're getting more moments of that. So as we continue to string those together, I think we're we're going to be in a good place by the end of the season. And what's it like playing with Tom as coach? It's fun. Tom's Tom's a fun guy. <laughs> I I enjoy playing with Tom. I think, especially as I've gotten older, um, it's nice to have a coach that listens and listens to what you have to say, and he he takes into account like our ideas and how we want to play and things like that. And he listens and implements and then, but he has, he has his way of playing and we all want to play for him. You know, we all respect him in that way that we want to do, do what he says and play hard for him. So I I think, yeah, he's a great guy. And let's kind of talk about your teammates a little bit then. Um, So just, I'm going to give you kind of a category. I want you to give me a name of who you think would fit that. So who's the best dressed in the Essex locker room? Who brings Tia. the style on game day? Yeah, I'll say Tia. Okay. Okay. What about well, Alexa came mm. and said, um, who do you think is the silliest person in the squad? Silliest? Oh, Probably Alexa, to be honest. <laughs> what about oh the worst taste in music? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Alexa again. She likes to listen to like country music and stuff. That's that's not for me. So yeah, it's a bit mm, okay. What about oh who's the happiest? Who's always the positive one? Oh. Quite a positive bunch, you know. We 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 stay stay quite positive. I would say, I'm trying to remember who's on my team now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've uh, seen them enough this weekend. I know. Uh, um, can I say myself? I don't know if that's allowed. Of course you can. Of course you can. I think I I think I would be I'd be in the mix for that one. Nice. Uh, let's just rewind back to the WBBL as a, as a whole. You've been around mm-hmm. uh, a few years now, a few different teams. From from where you were when you were Caledonia, like the league was, where, to where it is now, how do you feel the league is progressing? Yeah, I think uh, we were actually talking about this a few days ago. Like, I think the standard overall has really gone up a lot, even since I've joined, what, five, six seasons? I don't know. Um it's really it's going in the right direction you can see like the competitiveness of each team is going up Mm -hmm. like in the past you could pick out the top teams I mean you can still kind of pick out the top team but (laughs) apart from apart from the top team the the next kind of five six are all competitive with each other you certain days you don't know who's Mm -hmm. going to take the game and I think that just shows everyone is building you've got Teams like Leicester always have a great team, Seven Oaks, and now Caledonia are in that mix as well. Like they've got the the backing from their sponsor and they've put together a really good, strong team. Um just to say a few Sheffield as well, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of games where you're like, Yeah, this is gonna be really tough. They've got one, two, three, four, five, um 
six seven even yeah <laughs> like really good players like it's it's definitely um going getting bigger and bigger and you can see like women's basketball in britain is getting bigger and bigger so it's great so you you've played for four different teams in the league you must have played with quite a lot of the people that you're playing against not like what what's that like playing against people you obviously know very well maybe you've practiced with quite a bit what what is it like playing with with those it's fun like i enjoy it i'm pretty most of the people that i see when i play I'm, i've been like pretty good friends with so it's always fun to see them you know have a little chat with them while you're playing or <laughs> distract them a little bit in some way um and then again when you're playing you you almost know a little bit quicker what they're going to do mm-hmm. um for instance we played Kara Elderkin from in when she was in at Durham a few just yeah. before Christmas I thought I practiced against you for two years straight I know I know what's going to happen when you catch the ball so but then again she knows what I was going to do as well so mm-hmm. but it's definitely fun I enjoy I enjoy that part of a uh, part of playing like the people you meet even once you leave the team they, you you stay friends with them. Right, some fan questions now. Um, something we haven't talked about yet. Um, left it for this section is um a question from Kyle Leonard, Kennedy's dad. Um, he says that you are an amazing person, teammate, amazing player. He got a chance to watch you and Kenny obviously in the Commonwealth Games last summer. Uh, what was that whole experience like? What did that experience mean to you? It was it was a really cool experience. I was like, felt like a dream. It happened so quickly as well. It's like it almost like it didn't happen. Um, it was just so so such a cool event. Like, and the the fans in that little arena around that yeah. kind of half court. It was so loud. And even though it, we were in England, we were supported like a home nation. The crowd really got behind us, which was really cool. And then playing against some of the the people we played against like that Australian team were amazing I was like starstruck almost (laughs) it it, like the level of competition was really really good and the format of the three on three was really fun like I enjoyed playing like that and then again playing playing for Scotland is always amazing and fun um and then getting to play alongside uh Kennedy and Hannah and Shan it was was good like it was a good group of people to to experience it with had you played much 3x3 before the tournament like no never what, what was that like because it's it's obviously <laughs> a lot quicker and it, what was it like for you it took some adjusting honestly like the first the first time we practiced like obviously you've played like three on three in practice but yeah. it's just not the same like 3x3 is so it's so fast paced it's the thing that took me a little bit to get used to was like the speed that the ball kind of transitions like out and back in like you really have to be really on it like the ball goes in you have to go out and find the person that you're defending or they score or you get a rebound you're like sprinting out to three point lines take quick shots because of course the shot clock's a lot shorter as well so Mm -hmm. like it just all happens so fast um it took some adjusting bit like once you got it it's it's really fun but it's it's really for being the same game. It's really different to five on five. Yeah, yeah. All right. Another one. What advice would you give to young girls who are kind of starting their basketball journey? Um, I think just work on everything. Like, do your dribbling, your passing, and and the shooting. Do it, do it all. Um, and make sure you enjoy it. Like, don't feel like it's pressure like make have fun along the way um appreciate the people that are on your team like i think when i look back at playing basketball i don't think about like the achievements that i've had personally it's more about the people i've met and the teammates i have and i think that would be the biggest thing i would say make sure you appreciate the team around you more more than anything right some quick fire questions to finish off with then um right. ooh, let's start with your favorite Netflix series. Mm, Mindhunter. Oh, no, I don't I don't think I've heard of that one. It's really good. You should watch it. Okay. It's on the list. It's on the list. Uh do you prefer tea or coffee? Coffee. 
Uh, what's your favourite jersey number and why? Zero. Um, I have no reason. <laughs> Honestly, I used to wear I used to wear number ten, and when I came back from college, somebody already wore the number ten, so I was like, oh, just get rid of the one. I'll be zero. <laughs> Like, there wasn't much thought behind it. I'm always waiting for a really cool story with that question. I quite often get, yeah, just just is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favourite Disney film? Uh, oh. Tangled. Good one, good one. Uh, what annoys you the most? Um, noisy ears. That's a that's a popular answer for that question, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what's your game day routine? Um, I like to have a coffee, and I always eat like eggs and avocado and toast and bacon, and then we arrive at the gym like two o'clock ish. Eat another sandwich. I eat a lot before games, and then. I, I'm, I try really hard not to be like superstitious or anything so I try not to stick too close to doing anything mm-hmm. at the same time because in case I can't do it or something so quite just depends on the day I show up do what I feel like kind of thing. Um, <laughs> because I'd rather not be stressed about having to do everything in a certain way and then if it doesn't happen it'll be in my head that oh well I'm gonna be rubbish today because I didn't do this or whatever yeah. so yeah quite go with the flow kind of have you got a favorite time of day to play because i know like newcastle play their games at half seven durham play their games at one everyone's obviously slightly different um schedules some teams had to play at 11 o'clock that last the weekend in in essex what what's your favorite time of day to play uh yeah pro- like afternoon sometime between about two and five mm-hmm. okay. around there so not, not 11 o'clock in the morning no that wouldn't be ideal for me. No, I'd probably <laughs> probably still be half to. Uh, do you prefer to assist or score the basket? Oh, assist, I think, as long as it's a cool assist. <laughs> what is your favourite meal and why? Brunch. Oh, you can't beat a good uh, poached egg and avocado on toast. I'm sensing a lot of avocado love. Yeah, it's a strong, strong combination. Uh, what is your favourite moment on court ever? Ever, gosh. Um, oh, that's a hard one. Um, probably winning our conference tournament okay. my second year of college. That would be up there if not winning the trophy with Leicester, would be my second one. Uh, What one rule would you change or get rid of if you could? Like a basketball rule? Offensive fouls, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Just get rid of them. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah, probably that. Or, um, yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's pretty annoying. (laughs) <laughs> what's the top of your bucket list mm. I'd love to go to like South America like Mexico South America travel around there nice nice um, would you have pineapple on a pizza absolutely yes. correct answer <laughs> uh, who's your favourite basketball player of all time of all time um Dirk. Okay. Nowitzki. Nowitzki, yeah. Or uh, Nikola Jokic is close second. Do you, do you follow the NBA, WNBA? Do you have like a team that you follow? Yeah. So my favorite NBA team is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay. No idea why. It just, when I was a kid, like when I first started watching, it was like the Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, James Harden okay. era. And so I just stuck with them. WNBA, I like the Chicago Sky. Okay. Again, no reason why. I like Just... blue jerseys, obviously. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, what would you say your main strength as a basketballer was? Um. Hmm. 
I mean, I think my my biggest strength now is like kind of leadership, yeah. telling other people what to do. <laughs> I always say that I love telling people what to do. Um, also, shooting like just a standard three point shot, mm. a little turnaround jump shot. Maybe it's probably my trademark move. Apparently, nice. but um, yeah, I think more leading other people is the thing that I bring the most. Um, well, I've got one left, but just before I do, I want to say a huge thank you uh, to yourself for, for your time and giving us the chance to get to know you a bit better and your thoughts on a success in the league, your journey. So it's just a huge thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, let's finish with, can you finish this sentence? I love basketball because... <laughs> Because it's fun and fast paced and you get to play with really cool people. Amazing. Again, thank you so much. Good luck for the rest of the season. Uh, hopefully see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Claire, for your time, as I said. Amazing. Great to get uh, another kind of journey, another perspective on the league. And it's really interesting to hear from the players all the time. So thank you so much again. Let's move on then. Latest news for the season. Let's go through some results. Uh, a couple of weeks into the, the start of the kind of resumption after Christmas. Uh, let's go through that trophy weekend that we talked about uh, with Claire. Uh, as I say, from, from my point of view, really, really good weekend. Uh, I obviously understand all of the, the arguments about... Travel, um, how kind of seven, seven team, um, not seven teams, fifteen teams had a, an away game, um, with Essex the only kind of home team for for that. So I, I get all those arguments about costs and travel, but <laughs> selfishly for me, incredible weekend, getting to see every team play, um, getting to experience that the weekend that Cardiff uh, Durham game was was incredible, really tight. Um, getting to see the likes of London play again uh, and all the teams across the league so really really cool weekend let's go through the results and see who progressed to the next round so London against Brent obviously one of the, the Division 1 teams who were in 98-42 um, Durham against Cardiff as I said kind of one of the standout games for me 80-85 uh, to Cardiff and they advanced to meet London in the next round uh, Essex Seven Oaks, the one we talked with Claire about. Uh, Essex getting the win, seventy nine to sixty four, their first ever win against Seven Oaks. Uh, Caledonia against Thames Valley Cavaliers, uh, sixty nine forty seven. Caledonia were quite short handed, but still managed to to give a, a good performance. Uh, moving on to the Sunday of that weekend, Auckland's and Leicester. Leicester were incredible, uh, one hundred and four fifty three as they advanced. Manchester got their first win of the season against Cola, 68-42. to uh, Newcastle came out on top again against Nottingham. That's their second win against Nottingham this season, 90-82. to And Sheffield uh, stuck 137 in against Ipswich, who scored 72 in reply. So Sheffield advanced to the next round. Let's move on to this weekend just gone. Another just uh, set of fixtures for you. Um, stand out for the Eagles Riders game on Friday night 1,303 people in attendance uh, a new record for a regular season uh, like league game in this country so that's really good that is 68 uh, 60-82 Leicester spoiled the party slightly with their winning but um, yeah great great atmosphere great to be a part of that one Next, it was Caledonia against Auckland's 84-57. Caledonia took the win. Cardiff uh, put up a good fight against Sheffield, but Sheffield came out winners 91-82 on the road. Essex um, struggled against London 44-106. to And Nottingham put up a good fight against Seven Oaks, but lost by 10-70-80. Essex struggled against London, however, bounced back with a win against Manchester, 71-83. to There's just a quick rundown of all the fixtures that we've had uh, this, this week. Um, let's move on and let's have a look at next weekend. Durham now play Caledonia on Saturday. It was originally scheduled for Auckland, but it's changed and the Auckland game against Durham is now on the 4th of February. So Caledonia will be making the trip 
shorter trip south to play Durham on Saturday. Cardiff against Nottingham. Leicester, Sheffield in probably the standout tie of the weekend. Newcastle host London Lions as the final game on the Saturday. And Sunday, we have Manchester against Seven Oaks. So really looking forward to that Riders-Sheffield game, half seven on Saturday night. Well, that rounds up all of the fixtures and results. A little mention about London Lions. Their European campaign came to an end uh, as they lost their second leg. Uh, It was a close game, to be fair, and they just just didn't have enough to get over the line. Uh, Big news coming out of London as well last week was Kennedy Leonard um, has left, been fired, and um, I think everyone's got their fingers crossed that someone in the WBBL picks her up. Um, not sure that's going to happen, but yeah, we can we can always hope and dream. Um, I think that's it for me. Um, thank you for so much for following us and for keeping up to date with all of the WBBL news. Uh, let's see what this weekend brings. Can't wait, and I will see you later.